Hi, this is Captain John from SonarAngler.com. Today I'm going to talk about three different types of Garmin displays that you can use with a LiveScope LBS32 system. And I'll talk about how I chose the one that I ultimately purchased. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to talk about how I chose the Garmin EchoMap Ultra 106 SV to be my primary display for Garmin's LiveScope system. I'll cover the selection criteria that I used, the three options that I considered in terms of the three devices that I considered from Garmin uh, for the display. I'll also talk about key differences between those devices, what I ultimately bought, and also a quick note about mounting LiveScope that you might find useful. My selection criteria were that I had to be able to support LiveScope and the UHD sonar simultaneously. I teach people how to use these devices and I want to be able to demonstrate uh, all of the key features that these devices support. I needed to be able to have Garmin Lakeview G3 charts as I already teach Navionics on the Lowrance devices and I want to be able to compare and contrast the capabilities of the Lakeview G3 charts with what I've already done with Lowrance and Navionics. I need to be able to use the device on both my boat and in a classroom setting using the demo or simulator mode. I have to have excellent screen resolution because I want to be able to create videos with this device. And I also need to support GPX file transfers such as waypoints, trails, and routes between Humminbird, Lowrance, and Garmin. The three devices that I considered were the EchoMap UHD 93SV, the GPS Map 1022, and the EchoMap Ultra 106SV. Both of the EchoMap devices are a touch interface supplemented with buttons, and the GPS Map 1022 is a non-touch display that has buttons and knobs to control the interface. These are the key differences for me in terms of the criteria that I used for selecting which display to purchase. For running LiveScope and UHD sonar simultaneously, all three devices were ready to go. From a Lakeview G3 chart perspective, all three are capable of running these charts, but the GPS map 1022 doesn't come with those charts. So if you were going to do that, you'd need to plan to purchase those charts separately and add them later. So you'd have to factor that into the cost of that device. For working on by boat and also being able to use it in a classroom in demo or simulator mode, again, all three devices are, are quite capable of doing that. Maximum screen resolution, however, was an area where there was significant difference between these three models. For the EchoMap UHD 93SV, uh, 800 by 400 was it's a good display, and I've seen it in action on a number of people's boats, uh, but I wanted to be able to get a resolution higher than that. Uh, moving up from that 9-inch display to a 10-inch GPS Map 1022, the resolution is better at 1024 by 600, uh, but still not as high as what I noticed the EchoMap Ultra 106 was capable of at 1280 by 800. You'll notice the pixel count on the EchoMap Ultra is more than three times what's available on the EchoMap UHD and almost 60% higher than the GPS Map 1022. So of these three models, it clearly had the best uh, capability for high resolution display. Uh, for GPX file transfer support, all three of these devices will support that. Each one has the ability to accept an external card with GPX format data to be imported. I ultimately purchased the EchoMap Ultra 106 SV along with the Panoptics LiveScope system. In addition to that, I purchased the perspective mode mount, which allows me to rotate that transducer to use a new feature that they've added recently called perspective mode. And I'll cover that in a separate video. 
I bought an extra bale mount cradle and bracket that allows me to have one of the cradles mounted permanently on my boat and another mounted on my display rack in my training room. I have an extra power and data cable that allows me to move this from my primary boat to my secondary boat and a vehicle power cable which allows me to use a cigarette lighter adapter in my training room in order to power this in my training classes for demo or simulator mode. Also for mounting this on my boat, I purchased the Fishing Specialties Bowducer with an extra subplate and I want to touch on that for just a moment. I'm installing this device on my bay boat uh, and I'll be showing later videos on exactly how I do that. Uh, but I needed to be able to have the transducer move independently from the trolling motor. I've seen a number of installations where folks have tried to install this transducer, the LBS32, on their trolling motor. And unfortunately, that ties the transducer direction to whatever direction the trolling motor is pointed. And that's really not a very good idea. I wanted to be able to have this rotate independently from the trolling motor so that I can, if I'm facing into the wind with the trolling motor, I can pan to the sides, uh, starboard or port, by rotating the handle on this particular mount. I also want to be able to have what I'm referring to as an ambidextrous mount, which allows me to switch between port and starboard deployment of that transducer. The best mount that I found, and this was a slam dunk choice, is from fishingspecialties.com. They have a device called a bowducer, and I purchased that with an extra subplate so that I can have a subplate mounted on the right side of the boat and another on the left side of the boat, enabling me to switch the position of the transducer in just a matter of a few seconds. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing this, uh, this is an extra feature of this video. If you use the coupon code SONARANGLER at checkout uh, at fishingspecialties.com, uh, you'll be eligible for a 10% discount on the purchase price of that device. I hope that helps. As always, any questions or comments you might have are very much welcome. Add them to the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to click like and subscribe below. Until then, tight lines, everyone stay safe. Wear your life jackets.